Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. It's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy the video. In this episode, I'll be making a hollow form or a vase from sapely segmented rings and black coloured epoxy resin. I had a clear idea how this one was going to be done, but about halfway through, things changed a bit. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before I did anything else, I cast the resin blank. I mixed three batches of my favoured brand of epoxy resin coloured with black mica powder. This was poured straight into the casting bucket. The waste block was just a bit of soft wood turned down on the lathe and wrapped with some thin perspex sheet. Once poured, the casting went into the pressure pot, I added 50 psi and left it overnight to cure. The next job was to make the seven segmented rings, each consisting of 18 segments. Most of these had been accumulating from previous projects. The rest were cut on the table saw. To assemble the rings, I applied a liberal amount of glue to one side of each piece, then loosely formed a circle. Then I used a hose clamp to hold it all together and squeeze the joints nice and tight. When I assemble the rings, I do my best to keep them as flat as possible, with all the segments aligned around the circumference. Doing this makes the next stages much easier to do. When all seven rings were done, I left them for 24 hours for the glue to fully cure. I'll just show one being done, the rest were completed in the same way. It's the next day and the rings are ready for sanding. This is done to level and flatten each side. You could do this by hand or carefully with an electric sander, but the drum sander is definitely the way to go. With a 100 grit loading fitted to the drum, it only takes a few passes to do each ring. Sanding done, I set about gluing the rings together. The finished piece will consist of segmented rings for the base, a resin midsection, then a segmented ring top. First I did what I thought would be the base. This had three rings in it. Shown here it's been put together upside down. After applying glue, I stacked the rings using hot melt glue to hold them in place. Then I put weights on top and put it to one side to cure for 24 hours. The top has four rings in it. These were stacked in the same way. So moving on, the resin blank has been curing for 24 hours and it's cured with not a hint of a crack or a void. I needed to remove the excess waste block and the quickest way was to fix it to the lathe and turn it off. Using a 3 8 bowl gouge, I quickly cut it down flush with the resin blank. This actually loosened it enough so it could be knocked out. I could have left it like that, but I decided to remove a lot of the inner material, which made it lighter and I wouldn't have to struggle with it later on. Following it out was fairly straightforward. I began with the full size carbide, then switched to the quarter inch parting tool, keeping the cutting pressure against the chuck, which helped to keep the blank in place. I had to turn it around so I didn't cut into the chuck and with a full size carbide I set about finishing the hollowing out.
Next, I fix the top segmented section to the lathe. I level the top surface and cut a mortise so I could turn it around. The purpose here is to get the blank balanced and roughly shape the outside, then shape the inside before gluing the resin blank in place. With the blank firmly held in the forge or chuck, I began shear scraping the segmented rings, getting the larger ring to round. Then I started to shape the other rings. As this was just the first rough pass, I didn't want to remove too much material. Because this was the top, I didn't want to cut too deep into the smallest ring. The image I had in my head was a sweeping undercut from the rim into a shallow curve round into the shoulder of the vase, which would then curve round and down into the resin midsection, or at least that was the intention. With the outer surface done for now, I moved the tool post and started shaping the inside. This was done with a bowl gouge, mainly shear scraping, removing as much material as I dare. With the outside still needing to be finalised, I didn't want to make the side wall too thin. The peely cut very easily and the inside was soon to shape. After levelling the face of the ring, I used the full sized carbide to remove the heavier tool marks, after which I checked to make sure the inner diameter matched the resin midsection. Then I used a small negative rake scraper to blend and fair the surface. Then I sanded just the inside and cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Then it was ready to have the midsection glued on. For this, I used rapid setting epoxy resin mixed with black mica powder. The resin blank was still fixed to a chuck, so I used this to centre it on the tailstock, which I then used to apply pressure to the joint until it had fully cured. After 30 minutes, the joint was strong enough for me to start shaping the Sapili top section into the resin. When I made the larger Sapili ring, I knew it was bigger than the resin blank, but I thought I would just remove the excess. But after seeing it, I realised it offered a design feature that I wanted to explore. I used the bowl gauss to shear scrape some more away from the sapili and get the resin blank to round. Then, using the same gouge, I cut a chamfer into the underside of the lower sapili ring. I only did one cut, then switched to the skew to sharpen it up and clean up the resin joint. I really like the look of it, so I continued to refine the shape, reducing the size of the chamfer and blending the surface of the sapili. Although I liked it, there was something not quite right about it. Remember, this is the top. 
I thought I knew what was wrong, but I wouldn't know for sure until the base was glued on. The curves needed to be more pronounced to create a deeper OG profile from the midsection up into the neck. For this, I used a small negative rate scraper to remove small amounts, blending and fairing the surface. And that was, I thought, fairly close to how I wanted the top to look. So after a final check, I removed the tailstock and chuck in the resin blank and finished off the inside, then in the resin sidewall down and blending it into the Sapili segments. I had to do this now because once the base was glued on, I wouldn't be able to get to it. I also wasn't too worried about the wall thickness, so once everything was nice and smooth, I sanded just the inside from 80 to 600 grit, continuing up to 3000 grit on the resin. After sanding, I applied a finish, which is the same process as finishing the outside, which I'll show later on. Next, I had to do the base, same as the top. First, I leveled the underside, then I cut a mortise. And at this point, I also intended to fill the hole in the middle, but I was rushing, so I decided to do it at the end. After cutting the mortise, I turned the base around, marked a pencil line showing the inner diameter of the resin blank, then I hollowed it out, the same as before. I used the bowl gouge to remove the waste material and the scraper to blend the surface. Then I sanded and applied a finish, but I'm going to skip ahead to when the base has been glued on and the completed blank is ready to be turned. The blank has been refixed to the lathe with a base on the left. I began shaping the base, slowly removing material, getting the upper and lower ring to round. Then I began forming the cutout, cutting in on either side with the intention of forming a sharp transition between the two cut lines. But then I started to see the finished piece in a slightly different way. So rather than going deeper, I used a small scraper to form a shallow curve. And after a bit of work tidying up the edge of the base, I stopped the lathe to take a better look. My hand movement is me thinking out loud. I was considering cutting into that section of segments to form a curve going inwards and up towards the top, but that wouldn't have worked. Then I could see what had been in front of me all along. Using a bowl gouge, I cut another chamfer on the joint between the base and the resin midsection. This was followed by some work from the skew and a bit more reprofiling of the cutout with a gouge and a negative rate scraper. And there it was. I'd been looking at it the wrong way all along. The base was actually the top, and of course, what I thought should have been the top was in fact the base. Now it all made sense. I don't know what I'd been thinking. Having four rings on top and three in the base would never have worked. It was just too top heavy. So flipping it around put the whole thing in proportion. Obvious when you think about it. To even up the midsection, I reduced the size of the larger chamfer. Then I reprofiled the cutout in the new base. 
bombing the sharp transition I spoke about earlier. I tidied up the rim and that was it more or less done. Just the hole in the base to fix and the top of the rim to finish. I sanded with 80 grit to check for any ridges or low spots and off camera I made a circular plug for the hole in the base. With the tailstock removed I opened up the hole and glued the ash plug in place using black coloured rapid setting epoxy resin. This was allowed to cure for 30 minutes or so and then I cut it back flush with the base of the mortise. Then I sanded just the underside from 80 to 600 grit and applied a finish, topped off with Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. And with the vase turned around I could finish the top. Using the bowl gouge I formed a sweeping curve down into the opening. Shear scraping got it very close to the finished shape. I used the mid-sized carbide to do the undercut inside the opening and to finish, I used a skew chisel to refine the outer surface. To tidy up the inner part, I used 40 grit sandpaper. Then I sanded the outside up to 600 grit, continuing up to 3000 grit on the resin midsection. Then I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. This was followed up with two coats of sanding sealer, each one denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire Grit, a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then the resin polishing starting with Merca Polar Shine 10, a single application, thoroughly cleaned away, ready for the next compound. Polar Shine 5, another single application, thoroughly polished off to leave a deep shine. And last but not least, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats buffed with more paper towel to seal and protect the surface. That's it, another project finished. And what can I say? This one really did end up looking very different to how I imagined it. Flipping it around halfway through transformed it. The raised chamfers worked well to frame the resin midsection and I enjoyed every minute of doing this one and I hope you like it too. So with that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. A thumbs up will be much appreciated and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.